This video is brought to you by Grammarly. I've been video editing on a Mac for the better part of a decade. I started out with iMovie, editing stupid little kid projects. And then of course I later graduated to Final Cut Pro 10, which I've been using for the past five years to edit pretty much all of my YouTube videos, you know, my professional work that I do day in and day out. But the question is, can someone like me who's so invested in an operating system, a desktop one at that, and a certain program switch to something like an iPad Pro, which offers a similar video editing experience with something like LumaFusion and hopefully Final Final Cut Pro in the future, but as of right now, can I, Noah Herman, a hardcore Final Cut Pro 10 user, totally switch to an iPad Pro with LumaFusion? And that's the question we're going to answer today in this video. I'm going to be showing you my Mac workflow, and then I'm going to be trying to replicate some of that on my iPad Pro, my daily driver 12.9. So sit tight here. This is probably going to be kind of a long video, but of course, before we continue here, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that, and we'll help push my content to more people and if you are a recurring viewer go ahead and click the bell icon and enable all notifications it does help the channel out a lot so this is my desktop this is what i see when i'm done shooting things at like 2 30 in the morning you know because i procrastinate like an idiot but anyway uh when i sit down at my desk i usually plug in an sd card or the sd cards that i have my media on and what i do is i go into finder I don't know why that's on a second desktop and I open up said SD card and usually I have my footage in this like DCIM folder or if I'm shooting with my Sony, it's in this private area. You got to go to the M4 root folder and clip. Don't ask me how I figured that out, but I did. Uh, and what I end up doing is I make a new finder window uh, and then I go to my Samsung T2 or excuse me, T5 SSD. I go to my footage. I'm a little thing here, folder, whatever. I make a new folder and I title it whatever it is. So let's just say it was like iPad. You know, let's just let's just say the eighth gen was out. I'd make you know a folder. I'd open it up and then I would go into a DCIM folder or whatever folder I have my media in. Drag things over. So if this was like footage or you know clips or whatever, I would drag them in like so. Wait a minute, whatever. Um, and basically, when I have all of my media in this designated folder that I've created, I open up Final Cut. I make a new event because I like to have everything dated. So let me, if you scroll down here, I got 72720. I create a new project. I usually upload or edit in a weird 18 by 9 aspect ratio. So 2560 by 1280. That's because I don't want to do 4K because the, or like 4K equivalent because the files are big and I don't like have a great internet connection. So um, let's just say this is, you know, iPad 8th gen. Um, and I would create this and then I would, you know, go into that folder if it had, you know, audio clips and whatever. And I would just drag them in like so. And as you can see in Final Cut, I'm going kind of quickly because this is how I actually work. You know, I just drag things in. I would sync up audio if I need to. And I'll show you my previous project. Um, this was a keyboard comp keyboard compilation a keyboard comparison video that i did as you can see here i have all of my footage dragged in here and then i have an audio clip as well i have my intro shot i have my synced up clips and i have some b-roll as well so it all lives right here in final cut and what i normally do is and i'll demo it over here um, i go to my raw footage um so let, let's just go to you know like the i don't know this and then this big audio file, and then I'll select my top-down footage as well. I'm not gonna select all of it, I don't really need to. And what I do is I right-click and I click Synchronize Clips, so this locks everything together and makes my life really easy so I can put it into a compound clip, which I'll show you in a second here once this is done, once, once this is done processing. So if I click this, I have everything synced up. Of course, this isn't perfect because I didn't make it like that, but what I do is, is I will right-click, select it all, click New Compound Clip, and then copy this into my timeline and work with it and go within it and like for example if i wanted to have a different angle i could you know at some points delete portions of this clip so it'll like play back like this i know i'm going fast but this is how i work right i do this every other day every day pretty much um so this is my workflow this is how this ended up working i can adjust audio levels with my mouse and all this good stuff and if i go back into my project here i can delete this this is what this ends up like I, this is what it ends up like. I chop it up. I have music, as you can see here, down here. It's pretty linear. It's pretty simple. My editing style isn't as complex as it used to be for efficiency's sake. I have a little promotion in here where I have, you know, an image up in the right corner. I also have a 
you know, intro where, where I have a, an image being scaled up. If I play that, as you can see here, it scales up this paper-like intro. If you look right here, I have um, scale being animated. So there's a lot going on, uh, thankfully not too much, which should make this sort of workflow applicable to, you know, LumaFusion. But yeah, I'm excited to see how much of this I can replicate. I know not all of it. I know audio synchronization is not going to be there. But yeah, this is my workflow with Final Cut. And let's see once again how well it transfers to my iPad Pro. So here we have my daily driver iPad Pro 12.9 inch. As you may know, I use it for pretty casual stuff like note taking and web surfing and video watching and of course some school work when I'm in school. But yeah, we're gonna see just how well it can accommodate my creative workflow. And the first thing I'm gonna do is attach an SD card reader. It's USB type C to SD card. So I'm going to plug that in here and we're going to extract some of the files that I used for that project I was just showing off in Final Cut Pro. So let's remove the Apple Pencil and I'm gonna open up the Files app, which is similar enough to Finder. It has some of the same DNA, but it is a bit different, a bit more watered down if you ask me. But anyway, we're going to see if this drive pops up here. Is it plugged in all the way? I think so. All right, here it is, 128.1, that's what I named it. And I'm gonna go into on my iPad and I'm actually gonna make a new folder if I can do that. So let's see here, I'm going to create a new folder and just call this, um, I don't know, project. Uh, and today's date is the 28th and I'm going to copy the files into this folder. So I've already found the two audio files, 11 key comp and this intro 726 thing. So I'm going to drag this over to uh, my iPad and drag that into my project 728 folder. Same thing with this one. So we're already copying two files right here and that's taking some time, but we'll see just how long that takes. This is a couple hundred megabytes. Uh, and then we're gonna go into the uh, SD card once again and then copy over some footage. So you know what? I think it'll be easier if I make another instance of files. Yep, so I can open up this SD card and then drag things into the specific folder. So I'll reopen up project 728 folder here. I'm gonna go into DCIM and copy over some of the clips. So here we have these right here. And I'm gonna say for the sake of this video, I'm going to copy over the first two because I don't wanna kill the storage on my iPad. So I'm going to drag one and then drag the other. And that should be enough to give us an idea. So my camera decided to stop recording. That's one of its new tricks. But anyway, I copied over some other 4K footage as well. These two uh, B-roll clips here and an A-roll clip or a side clip here. And uh, yeah, we're going to get this all copied over and I'm gonna see just how long it takes for all of this to be imported and ready to use in a LumaFusion project. Okay, so after importing like a couple gigabytes worth of clips, it took around 10 minutes. Uh, this is definitely slower compared to my Mac or a MacBook, but it might be the reader that is acting as a bottleneck. It might be the port. So um, yeah, that's something to keep in mind here. Although I'm positive if you buy uh, the right sort of adapter or hardware, you should be fine, but that might be something to consider here. So now with this media imported, now we're going to put it or drop it into LumaFusion. So let's open up LumaFusion here, which is conveniently on my dock and already opened up. So I'm gonna create a new project here. I'm gonna call it Keyboard Comp, just like I did on my Mac. And then I'm going to have the frame aspect as something, can I do 18 by nine? We'll do the IMAX Digital 1.9 by one. That's close enough. So we're gonna click that. Um, is there, can I adjust the resolution? No, I guess not. So plus, okay. So here we are, and I'm going to import some footage. We're gonna go to files and we're going to go to browse and I'm going to go to that folder that I created. Locations on my iPad. Here we are, project 72827. I'm gonna select all of these things right here and then open. So, it's instantly imported in here because it is on the internal storage on my iPad. I have done some work with external storage and from what it seems like, um, it just sort of imports it onto your internal storage and then opens it up in the app. So I don't think you can work externally quite yet like I do with Final Cut here, but don't quote me on that. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to drag the audio file onto the timeline here and actually drag the intro one as well on here so I can sort of line up the corresponding footage. So I can go all the way here and then before this audio clip, drag that before it. So we have the intro audio and then we have the keyboard composition audio. And um, I'm going to find the one point that I want here. So I'm going to 
kind of scroll or crop to the end because I know that I didn't screw up towards the end. That's kind of what happens. Like my good take when I'm recording something usually happens towards the end of my recording. So 12.9 inch version, sadly, at the moment. But yeah, in this video today, we're going to be comparing recently Logitech. All right, so there we go. And then I'm going to drag in my intro footage. Okay, it took a minute, but I think I found where my intro audio and video like sync up. It's not fun to do this and having it automatically done in Final Cut Pro is definitely a lifesaver. So I don't know if I wanna do this every day, but if you are somebody with this program and you like the iPad form factor, it's definitely possible. And of course there are methods of embedding higher quality audio into video anyway. Recently launched I got it perfectly synced, I think here. And now what I can do is I can mute the audio in this like layer here, if you know what I mean. So this is the video layer that I have, so I can mute that and then touch a new keyboard. Yep, there we go. Recently Logitech Plus. So you can see me screwing up there. And now that that's synced up, now I can begin to sort of crop in and find where um, the footage is that, uh, you know, where I actually don't screw up or where I'm coherent. So I can crop this audio here. And you know, before I clip anything, I actually wanna edit this footage a little bit just to make sure that it is correct or looks good so i'll double tap this how about that and then i can maybe warm this up and in doing so adjust the levels here so i can you know maybe bring down the highlights a little bit um, i can increase some of the blues maybe nah i don't know so that's the intro i've had enough editing this for right now i don't need to make it perfect so i'm just going to uh, crop away some of the you know extra bits here um, so that was of course a bit harder than it would be in Final Cut, but you have to keep in mind This is not a workflow or a style. I'm used to editing in I'm sure if you do this every day and for a living it's gonna be more convenient But one thing I will say is having Automatically synced audio and the ability to make compound clips which can sort of consolidate all these into one clip that you can You know cut up and edit and you can like go into that compound clip and then make individual adjustments to your clips without necessarily touching them on the outside if you know what I mean that's something that is missing here from my knowledge I actually Google searched like compound clips in LumaFusion that doesn't seem to be a feature right now so um, I would say this is a bit more difficult in general to do but it's definitely possible and actually not that hard at all once you get the hang of it so here is the keyboard comp and I'm going to drag in two pieces of footage here, my side view or side angle and my top down. And we're going to do the same thing and find an area where the audio is synced up. It doesn't have to be super perfect because like my mouth isn't moving in this. You can't see my face. So, so long as it's generally in the right area, we should be all good to go. And if you like clap or do some sort of pattern so you can more easily identify where the audio syncs up. But I have to do a game of like search right now to try to find where the waveform looks similar and also listen for certain cues. So we've synced that up right here. And what I'm gonna do real quick is actually do a transform on this. Go into the little position settings here and rotate this 180 degrees. If I can type this in, that'd be great. So that's cool. I'm also gonna scale in a bit here. So size, I'm going to Make that like 111, cool, and then we should be good to go. I also wanna look at the LUTs here, actually, cause I just was seeing those. We can go to effects, um, filmic. Well, none of these really fit what I need to do, but I might do like a warmness adjustment or something like that. So we'll go to warm up a little bit. That should be good. And then I can lower some of the mids or whatever you wanna call it, like the middle range values. Okay, I think I found where the other clip syncs up as well. Both of these cases and if I haven't already said that's good enough for me I might adjust it just a tad bit and listen to it again and it this comp was in it around one that's good enough for me so now I'm going to mute this clip and then bring this clip back into view so yeah now I have both of these clips ready to go and for the sake of time I'm just gonna be paying attention to this like two three minute span here because editing an entire video in Final Cut takes an hour or two or even longer depending on how much b-roll I have and how much a-roll I have as well so um, this should give us a good idea as to what the workflow should be like so syncing up audio was not as bad as I thought I was not looking forward to doing this with the Apple Pencil and just on the iPad in general but it wasn't bad it takes a minute you have to have a careful eye but if you can do it you'll get used to it and it should be fine although once again automatic stuff really is a time saver. So let's just say I wanna see a different angle at, I don't know, 127 here. I could tap this clip, press the cut button, and then of course, 
reveal some of the side view here. And of course, if you want to edit this clip, you can go into here and then adjust the scale, which is what I'm going to do. I can adjust the size here and some of the position as well. I'm also going to warm this clip up as well, just like I did with the others. That might not be the best look for this, but it still looks pretty decent here. And of course, there are more in-depth LUTs and things you can do in these settings. All right, so here we have both of these cases, and if I haven't already said it, this comes in at That seems pretty natural, once. right? So I would continue to make cuts like that, and yeah, that's basically what I'd be doing for however long the duration of this clip is. I think it was like 35 minutes, and I'd make my cuts here. Of course, again, it's easier when it's a compound clip. You have less things to worry about, but um, it's a similar concept. I mean, like you make your cuts, but if, like for example, I wanted to get a side view, I'd have to double click on that compound clip and then go in and see a view just like this, and you know cut out the individual parts of the for example top down that i want eliminated so i could see the um a side view which would usually be on the bottom i feel like i'm just sort of talking in circles like you don't understand what i'm saying but if you are a video editor i think you might have an idea so forgive me if i'm a bit confusing here but i'm just sort of speaking about how things are layered upon a timeline if you know what i mean but beyond synchronizing audio and making cuts and doing some color correction and grading, you have to worry about downloading assets off the web, especially when you have client work. Like if I have a sponsor, they're gonna have some assets that I need to download, like a logo or some kind of page that I need to overlay at some point in my video. And also something to consider, as a creative professional, beyond showing prowess in the editor's chair, you also need to demonstrate effective communication skills, especially when conversing with potential clients. And that's why you should consider implementing Grammarly today's video sponsor into your workflow. When you're writing a lot of emails, it's easy to make mistakes and sort of default to something boring or bland. But with Grammarly, you can tidy as well as spice things up a bit. They offer a browser extension and online editor which check grammar and spelling out the gate. But with their premium service, you get advanced writing feedback. It's great to have a sort of second mind at the ready to suggest that I condense something down or offer a better synonym with their vocabulary suggestion feature, which happens to be my favorite because sometimes I feel a bit repetitive. With Grammarly, I now feel more confident that my emails make sense, especially when I'm writing them late at night. Their web extension works seamlessly with sites like Gmail, and their editor provides detailed suggestions and feedback on writing you input. So focus on what you do best, creating, and let Grammarly optimize your business writing so you can communicate more effectively with your clients. Use my link, grammarly.com slash Noah, to sign up for a free account and get 20% off of Grammarly Premium. But anyway, getting back to the video here, I'm going to open up an instance of Safari and I'm going to log on to my Epidemic Sounds account so I can download some track that I want to put into my video. So Epidemic. So here I am on the site and I can go to different genres or moods. For example, I can go to genres, I can click beats. This is what I usually use in my videos because it's like a sort of chill vibe that you get so I can play an instrumental here. Okay. Sure, you know what, that works. I'm gonna press the download button here. I'm going to download the full mix. And I'm going to press download here and it's gonna go into my downloads folder. Here it is right here. So as you can see, this is downloaded and I think I can drag it directly into LumaFusion here and it actually pops up right into the imported so I can drag that into here, cool. So I can close this and now we have this music directly here. So I can drag this, let's just say below everything. So I can adjust the audio level here. I'll bring it to like negative 20. Let's see how that goes. Their new Folio Touch Keyboard and Trackpad 60 and the Magic Keyboard. Still way too loud. So I'll bring it to like negative 30. 279 with education pricing and basically 300 in most cases. Yeah, that so works. Really that wasn't that bad at all. That's not harder compared to like just downloading it in Safari or Chrome on my Mac and dragging that right in. So that's actually really convenient. I'm surprised how well that works. So yeah, implementing music doesn't seem that bad. Another thing I'm going to do is drag in a sponsor image. And this video is not sponsored, but one of my biggest supporters is Paperlike. So I'm going to drag in their little image here that I usually will put um, in the front of like a video where I say like this video is brought to you by um, paper like for example so I imported an image and now I can drag that into here as well and once again close this split view so here is this so if I had to put this at the beginning of a video I could drag it for example all the way to the front you know all right so we got this right here not the best quality image but let's see if I can animate it a bit so I'm going to uh, double tap this here so what I wanted to do is I wanted to sort of scale over time cropping in position okay so zoom in here we go so I can find this so we can see how that looks. 
So that's a little bit too much, I would say here. So let's uh, go back. So this is this goes for three seconds. I'm going to change the size at this point to like that. Let's see. So there we go. That's more of a subtle zoom. There we go. That was easy. So now I can go back here and now I have this sort of subtle zoom where I could say this video is brought to you by Paperlike. And then Recently the video begins. And also before we continue with anything else, I want to see if I can add a transition so I can plus add a transition. Does this fade in? Here we go. Recently, Logitech pleasantly That's how I usually do it. So, you know, then I can have a transition here as well. So another transition, maybe another one at the front here, if I can do that. So yeah, let me see. So this video is brought to you by Paperlike. And then recently Logitech. Yeah, pleasantly that's beautiful. It works out fine. There might be a few more transitions within Final Cut, but I mean, I use the crossfade for the most part. I keep my editing pretty simple and yeah, that's pretty painless here. I'm not going to lie. And the last thing I want to do is work with some B-roll. So I'm going to extend this audio clip here and I'm going to drag one or two of these down. Just one probably because they're like the same sort of concept. You know what I mean? Same sort of clip and angle and everything. So I'm going to zoom in here. And something that I like to do immediately is retime these to um, 24 FPS. So if it's like, you know, at 30p, I will reduce it to 80% speed. So I'll double tap this here. And I believe there's a retime button right here. So if I can bring this to 0.8x. There we go. And then I can play that back here. Get this soft touch Apple and it's just more, that's funny. It sounds like a corporate ad. So it'll look more like cinematic, if you will. So I'll go back here as well. Or actually, no, I'm going to edit the look here. So I'm going to press warm up because this clip is sort of kind of cool. Um, I can also adjust the levels as well. Hopefully my head isn't popping in every five seconds. Um, I can adjust some of the contrast here, maybe some of the vibrance. Uh, and yeah, let's play this back. Um, which is pretty much present. And yeah, here we have this B-roll clip edited to my liking. I think it might be a bit overexposed, but I could go back and change things a little bit here. Um, I'm not going to lie. I do enjoy color correcting and just doing more grading in Final Cut better, probably because I'm used to it. And also, I don't believe in, again, don't quote me on this. I don't believe there's like a little waveform view you can see, which can sort of show you like how like uh, your highlights and mids and lows are looking in between the values of 0 and 100. If you know anything about that, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But in here, you sort of have to eyeball it which is fine honestly i mean you can sort of tell when something's overexposed or underexposed or you know like whatever so it's pretty easy i have to say and of course you can drag and drop and retime very nicely as well and i'll end things here with the editing by adding an overlay title because of course i have to make corrections sometimes or like leave some additional information so i can double tap this and okay or double tap this in here so i can edit here yeah okay so i can type something so i don't know like ipad eighth gen or whatever let's just say that was something i wanted to correct or you know say in this video without verbally saying it i could change some of the font i could change the font style so we can go to helvetica if it's not already that i can find this helvetica yep i can adjust the size the line spacing maybe i can change the face color to i don't know like purple that's fine it doesn't really matter to me this is just a tutorial so that is showing up yeah so i can overlay it right here and that's super easy of course you can resize this as well so let me double tap here so yeah i could resize where this is very nicely or very easily as well um i think i have to actually change the size like this here and then i can drag it to where i want but that's again intuitive simple not harder at all compared to final cut pro and having the apple pencil allows you to be you know pretty precise just like you would be with the cursor and something else I want to add is that with LumaFusion, there are keyboard shortcuts available. So if you have the magic keyboard and you want to use the, you know, trackpad or, you know, like cursor support, you can definitely do that. I just didn't want to because I'm not accustomed to that. And that would have made the editing process a bit slower. And also, um, I'm not going to judge this program for not having any because I didn't use them. So that's a nice feature to um, think about as well. It'll make your editing process or workflow a lot more seamless. I will say and more similar to Final Cut or iMovie. 
and more similar to Final Cut than, you know, this sort of touchscreen experiences. But I have to say, it is really nice using the Apple Pencil and just sort of scrolling through here with your fingers. It feels a little bit more hands-on than Final Cut. That's something I do enjoy about editing on an iPad. It feels a bit more natural in some ways. But of course, I will say, once you get accustomed to a particular program, especially on a desktop or a MacBook or a laptop, you do get, you know, used to that and you can be the most efficient with that. So take a lot of what I'm saying about this program with a grain of salt because I am, once again, a custom to a completely different workflow and method of input here. But yeah, overall, I have to say, if I had to switch to iPad Pro, I could definitely do it. There are some things that I like better and there are some things that I don't, um, but what I and there are some things that I don't. So yeah, this has been my experience editing with LumaFusion here. Of course, I didn't demo every aspect of this program, but I really did kind of show you what I do in my normal video workflow here. And let's actually export this project here. I'm gonna export a movie to my photos here, and I, I'm gonna pick 1440p quality here. I'm also gonna pick the quality video quality, I guess, H.264, and we're going to export it here. And something I love about the A12Z and the A12X and really any other Apple ARM chip is that they're super fast and optimized for this software so you can export, you know, high quality video in not an excruciatingly long time. So you're not going to be suffering at all when it comes to rendering or exporting your projects here. It's going to be similar in performance, I would say, to a MacBook Pro or iMac running Final Cut. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So it took about three and a half minutes to export that 4K clip and it's right here in my photo library. And if I wanted to, I could go to youtube.com, upload the video here and select this file from my photo library. So I could go to all photos and then I can choose this video right here and press done. And then here we are uploading. That's super easy and it's not at all harder uh, than doing it on a Mac. Like this is equivalent in convenience here. So it's uploading and of course, I could, you know what I mean, like have a separate tab open if I wanted to look up some like relevant search terms or tags or stuff to put into my description here. So yeah, basically I could do my YouTube workflow on here. I plan on doing a different video where I, you know, do some photo editing where I might make like a thumbnail. I know my friend Isaac, you know, Canoopsy, if you know him, does a lot of photo work with his iPad Pro. So it's more than possible. So yeah, I am definitely impressed with what you can do with this tablet. I'm actually a bit surprised I had lower expectations for it because I really am a hardcore Final Cut user, but I could see myself switching to this in the future if they become even more comparable, if they do bring audio synchronization and if like the cursor support is similar to that of Final Cut. I hope that Apple brings Final Cut to the iPad Pro ultimately, but LumaFusion, like I've said in the past, is like I would say 85% there in terms of features and just the overall workflow. So. Yeah, I could definitely do it. As of right now though, I would not prefer to because I am the most efficient when I'm sitting in front of my iMac. But yeah, you can definitely buy an iPad Pro for a video editing workflow. As you can see, I easily imported footage off of an SD card and manipulated stuff or downloaded assets offline and I you know, manually synchronized clips. A lot of the stuff you need to do as a video editor is more than possible and convenient with this form factor. So yeah, if you wanna do video editing, buy this. You're gonna be happy with it. Buy an Apple Pencil as well buy a keyboard and do buy, by the way, a bigger capacity one. You're going to need it. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video helped you out. Once again, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe for more content like this. Once again, check out Grammarly. I'll leave a link in the video description. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.